I'd like to welcome you to the Oklahoma Career and Technical Education Equity Council Making It Work Day event. I'm the OKC Tech President. My name is Robin Shambaugh. We are so happy to have you all here joining us today at this beautiful event center to recognize these wonderful awardees for all their hard work, community support, and leadership. Today we will present awards representing the awardees in all four corners of the state. These awardees were nominated by colleagues who have recognized what an impact they have made on their families and communities. Graduates with us today have overcame great obstacles, made drastic changes in their lives, and created a whole new future for their families. Business and community partners awarded today have not only provided overwhelming opportunities for people in their communities, but they have touched lives and made a difference for so many. Instructors awarded today have done much more than just teach. They have opened doors for students who were not sure there was even a door to go through. <clears throat> These instructors give their students a whole new perspective on ability and equity in the workforce. We thank all of you for being who you are in your communities, and we are so happy to acknowledge you today. We would also like to recognize our dignitaries who have joined us today and who will be assisting in the ceremony. For the Northeast, we have Lisa Batchelder, Chief Financial Officer, Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. We have Dr. Stephanie Bocamp, Assistant Vice Chancellor, Associate, Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education. And we have Sandra Shelby, Assistant Director of Adult and Family Services, Oklahoma Human Services. <laughs> we would like to acknowledge our superintendents and presidents of the career techs and colleges we appreciate your support for the students, the community, and the programs represented here today. I don't know if we have any legislatures in the house today. Okay, hopefully we'll have some show up today. <laughs> uh, we acknowledge families and friends with us today as well. Thank you all for supporting these awardees through their journey. Your support is invaluable. Our awards for our first region, the Northeast region, will be presented today by Lisa Batchelder. Chief Financial Officer, Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Please welcome Lisa Batchelder. Good morning, everyone. I am so honored to be here today to uh, celebrate the students and their achievements and recognize the uh, business partners and community leaders who have uh, assisted the students in their educational and employment pursuits. I'm very honored to be here and happy to celebrate today with you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> From the Northeast region on the Making It Workday Spotlight, we have Frances Columbine. Frances is from Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. She was nominated by Katie Quillen uh, with her Senator Roger Thompson and Representative Scott Fetgatter. I hope I didn't butcher that name, Fetgatter. Um, Fran was a public school teacher for 35 years. She began her journey with OSUIT as the adult education GED instructor for the night class. In 2015, Fran became the director for not only the adult education program, overseeing 10 class sites, but also the OSUIT Empower Special Projects program. Since becoming the director, she has helped grow OSUIT's presence among special projects and is now the director of the Okmulgee, McAllister, and Atoka sites. Welcome, Frances Columbine. Lisa, it's wonderful to meet you and put a face with the name that I see signed on all of our ABE documents. <laughs> I can run a pin. <laughs> thank you all for coming. I want to thank you for nominating me and voting for this most prestigious honor. I'm very humbled and greatly appreciative to receive it. There are many people who work together to make a program flow the way ours does at OSUIT. I want to thank the following Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology personnel uh, for letting us stay on campus. We have been there 
since the early 90s, I believe. I've, I've been there since 98, and they were there a lot longer before I was. I want to thank Dr. Bill Path, our former president, Mr. Chris Binge, VP of Operations now, Dr. Randy Wymore, our new provost, Mr. Charles Harrison, our former VP of Workforce and Economic Development, Dr. Trey Hill, Dean of SASH. Dr. Hill is also the cookie monster. He's the one that's responsible for these wonderful OSUIT no calorie on Wednesday cookies <laughs> that you all will enjoy today. I also want to thank Brenda Walker, our financial specialist, and Joe Stevens Logistics, and Letha Bowder. I want to thank my husband, Jan. for never complaining about the long hours that I put in. Many thanks to Gina McPherson for her guidance, direction, and patience, to Jennifer Bielli, Amber Adams, Chantrice Carey, and Amber Westbrook. These are our wonderful Oklahoma Human Services partners, and I do mean partners. We work well together. We couldn't function without their help. I know you're not supposed to read a speech, but there you go. <laughs> there are awesome women who take excellent care of our students and their children. Thank you, Terry Green and Cindy Taylor, our new McAllister and Atoka occupational specialist. But most of all, thank you, Katie. Not only are you a dynamo in the classroom, but you are an exceptional instructional leader and a super coordinator. You're absolutely the best. I am so sorry. <laughs> when I was explaining to my mother about our Empower program and the purpose of it, how we function, how we help our students choose a career path, whether it be an academic path first, and Katie and I are called academic bullies because we steer our children, and they are children when they come into us, we steer them toward an education. Most of them never thought that they could go to school. Most of them did not think they could pass. We prove them wrong on a daily basis. Some of them want to go straight into employment and they come back very quickly thinking, my body can't take this. I can't feed my children on $8 an hour. So we get out the old educational bully thing again. Okay, well, you can't do it on $8 an hour. Well, let's get this degree. If you get this degree, you can make this much money. And once they have people that have been in our program start coming back, well, I'm making $17 an hour. Well, I'm making $23 an hour. I'm not lifting people. I'm not emptying bedpans. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I have a degree. And so, we are educational bullies, but it leads to a path of greater employment. And Letha, I know we're supposed to get them employed, and so we've just got to take a little circle, like the family circus, to get them there. But as I was telling my mom what we did and how we do it, she said, I would have given my eye teeth to have had a program like that to help me while I raised four children. This program is a bird's nest on the ground for those who utilize it the right way. It's not a give me, it's, it's a hand up and a come on, you can do this. We have students that are utilizing our program the correct way. We have them graduating with associate's degrees, multiple certificates and license, and going directly into sustainable employment. And all this without a student loan. That's unheard of in this day and time. Folks, we all do a great job getting our students where they need to be, getting them out of generational poverty, and helping them to become contributing members of society. It is a pleasure to work with all of our partners on a daily basis and to assist all of our students in every way that we can. We watch them flourish with new knowledge, skills, <coughs> excuse me, and talents. We change their family dynamics by what we do for them. Again, thank you for this spotlight. Of
outstanding graduate, Victoria Wilson. Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology, nominated by Katie Quillen, Senator Roger Thompson, and Representative Scott Fetgatter. Uh, my name is Katie Quillen, and I'm going to read Victoria's speech because she said um, she doesn't do speeches, and all of you would be blessed with way too much of her today. So. <laughs> um, and these are her words, not mine. My name is Victoria Wilson. I'm a graduate of the OSUIT Empower program. My journey began when my SNAP caseworker, Angela James, informed me about TANF and how there were programs within TANF to help me. I applied for TANF and immediately met Katie Quillen at OSUIT. I was nervous about joining the program and truthfully, not very hopeful it would help. I had attended OSUIT many years ago under the Ability to Benefit Act due to not having a high school diploma. That program was to help me obtain my high school diploma, but that didn't happen. I'd never been on TANF before and didn't have much time because my son was a senior in high school and that worried me that I wouldn't have enough time to finish. I needed to find something and become employed quickly. After looking at my hours, I only needed one more semester and I could apply for my high school diploma. Empower helped me achieve my goals and so much more. Katie and Fran helped me with my classes and referred me to the WIOA program to be co-enrolled in the adult program. I was able to do a WEX internship through the Workforce and Economic Development Department at OSUIT and learn about grants and customized training. After three semesters, I graduated college with my associate's degree in pre-professional studies and on the Dean's Honor Roll. An agreement was made with OSUIT's WeFed group and the WIOA program for an OJT, and I was hired by OSUIT as the Grant Administrative Support Specialist. I couldn't have done any of this without the support of the Empire program in TANF. Programs like Empower are needed for so many reasons. Individuals like me don't know they can get to where I am today. The challenges we face when trying to gain an education and support our families on our own can be scary. These programs provide the needed support and understanding for families like mine when no one else does. I first want to thank Miss Katie and Miss Fran for helping me and being my safety net when I needed them to, for pushing me even when I didn't believe in myself and for guiding me into the career I have today. I want to thank my OHS family coach, Amber Adams, for working with Katie and Fran and making sure that I had all the support I needed during my journey. Lastly, I want to thank Mr. Charles Harrison for agreeing to let me intern with him and seeing in me what I didn't yet see in myself. Thank you for this award today, Victoria Wilson. Next we have outstanding graduate Chelsea Wilson. Tulsa Technology Center nominated by Gina Cole, Senator Joan Newhouse, and Representative Chris Banning. <laughs> Chelsea Wilson was nominated for this award because of her perseverance. From day one, she knew what it would take and where she wanted to be employed. Along the way, she had endured a couple of setbacks, but she stayed focused and got it done. Chelsea's completed the Emergency Medical Technician Program at Tulsa Tech, where she received the National Register Emergency Medical Technician Certification. The EMT program is a prerequisite for Tulsa Tech's paramedic program. Upon completing the paramedic program, she's now a nationally registered paramedic with the certifications in basic and advanced life support, as well as pediatric advanced life support. Of October 2023, Chelsea is employed with 
EMSA as a paramedic. Welcome, Chelsea. I have always known I wanted to go into the medical field, and I did not know how I was going to do that. And with the help of the project hire at Tulsa Tech, I was able to accomplish my EMT program and then go on to do the paramedic program as well. I want to thank everybody that helped me, especially the ladies at uh, Project Hire who were there for me and helped me all, all through the way. My kids, uh, my oldest will graduate high school this year with an automotive pro uh, degree from Tulsa Tech. My daughter will start her sports medicine degree when she's a senior. Now for Outstanding Community Partner, Baptist Village and Representative Matthew Wood. <laughs> Nominated by Katie Quillen and Fran Columbine, Senator Roger Thompson and Representative Scott Fedgatter. Matthew is the campus manager of the assisted living facility called Baptist Village. Matthew has been an exceptional community partner. He allows us to place students in soft skills and core internships so they may learn hands-on skills in the pathway they plan to obtain a career. Matthew and his staff work diligently to ensure our students fully understand each position. Matthew is always eager to take on new students. Matthew and his staff take time to ensure our students receive a full understanding of what it is like to work in the healthcare profession. Because of the partnership with Matthew, many of our students can go on to the LPN program and be prepared. Welcome, Matthew Wood. Thank you. Again, as she said, I'm the campus director of the Assisted Living Center at Baptist Village of Oak Mulgee. We are part of Baptist Village Communities, the largest not-for-profit provider of senior housing in Oklahoma. You may not have known that. As we gather here today, um, I'm honored to share the story of our work with Empower at Baptist Village that's paving the way for a future where every senior in Oklahoma receives the care and respect that they deserve. As the manager of Baptist Village, I've had the privilege of witnessing the transformative power of collaboration. Our work with Empower Interns isn't just a partnership, it's a way of facing, I argue, what I argue is one of the most significant societal challenges of our time and, and of the near future. And people in our field call this the age wave. For those unfamiliar, the age wave refers to a demographic shift projected by the Census Bureau to occur by 2034, so only 10 years down the road, where for the first time in U.S. history, our senior population, those age 65 and over, those who we serve, will outnumber our younger generations. This isn't a distant future scenario. It's a reality that's upon us with profound implications for our state. At the core of this challenge lies a great problem. There is and will be a critical shortage of skilled caregivers available to meet this demand. We don't have enough workers to fulfill this great need. It's here, at this intersection of need and opportunity, that our campus work, our campus works with Empower. From my perspective as a professional in the senior adult 
industry, programs like Empower help ensure that as the number of seniors grow, which they will, so too does the workforce ready and able to care for them. Many of the interns that come to us through Empower are at the forefront of this new generation of caregivers. They're not just filling positions, they're fulfilling a crucial need, increasing our capacity to provide the exemplary care that our elders deserve. In my own life, a program similar to Empower was a turning point for me. It helped me secure my GED at a time when my path wasn't clear. That achievement was the first step in a journey that led me to where I am today. Inspired by the support I received from incredible family and mentors, I pursued further education, eventually earning a Bachelor of Business Administration. Now, I have the privilege of leading a dedicated team of over 20 people at Baptist Village, which is all done to glorify my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My personal journey, and I thought it was really important, but my personal journey mirrors the journey we embark on as we raise up a new generation of caregivers together. Just as support and opportunity propelled me forward, our collaboration leverages these same principles to confront the challenges ahead. Our work together is a model of proactive response to the age wave. By integrating these dedicated interns into our community, we're not only enhancing the quality of care we provide, we're also addressing the looming workforce crisis ahead. Each intern who joins us becomes a testament to the change required in order that no senior is left without care due to lack of qualified staff. Together, and again I say together, we can lead this charge showing that with the right training, support, and collaboration, we can turn the tide of the age wave that's looming over our country and state into an opportunity for innovation and improved care. So again, as we together look forward to the future, let us work to serve as an inspiration for others to follow. The road ahead requires not just awareness, but action. We must all recognize the vital role of trained caregivers in meeting the needs of our aging population. With this action, we can ensure a future where every senior adult in Oklahoma has access to the care and dignity that they rightly deserve. Thank you for your attention, your support, and your commitment to a cause that touches us all. Next for our outstanding business and industry partner, Katner Mills Motor Supply of Grove, with Carl Holt representing. Nominated. <laughs> Nominated by Robin Shambaugh, Senator Tom Woods, representative is Josh West. It's an honor to have Carl Holt as a great partner in our community Carl believes in second chances, and he graciously accepts our students as part of his team. During their training, they can get familiar with automotive parts, experience greeting customers and talking to local mechanics, all while building customer service skills and building their knowledge in the automotive field. After they have completed their internship placement, Carl gives them a chance for employment. Welcome, Carl Holt. First off, I'd like to say thank you to Robin Shambaugh for the nomination for Outstanding Business and Industry Partner. It's an honor to be nominated for this award, let alone to be the recipient. I'm also honored as a business partner to be part of this alliance with Journey to Success, 
to be able to help individuals better their situation in life. I'm always happy to accept any candidate that Robin feels will benefit from working in our industry. And Journey to Success has always been a very outstanding organization to work with to help further the business and vocational skills of individuals seeking to better themselves and their opportunities. I've worked with Journey to Success for quite a few years and I feel it's been very beneficial for everybody involved. And none of us are perfect. We never really know what our problems or situations in life is going to be that's going to throw us a curveball. The Journey to Success has always had a mission to help individuals. And that mission allows them a second chance at improving their situation in life. And I feel this helps them to find a vocation that fits them and one that they're happy with. Because if you enjoy what you're doing, well, it doesn't feel like you ever work a day in your life. I've had a job since I've been 14 years old. And some of them I like and some of them not so much. You know, I've always been a people person, and that kind of naturally steered me into the retail industry. I'm currently owner-operator of uh, Catner Mills Motor Supply in Grove, Oklahoma. We're a Napa jobber. And uh, I've worked there for over 28 years now, and I've been a sole owner for the last 10 years. And believe me, there's been lots and lots of problems to solve. I don't know of a single counter person or mechanic, you know, that has a solution to every single problem. Because there's a lot of things that can go wrong with cars and trucks. And we also deal with industrial, agricultural, marine, hydraulic, and electrical issues. And because we deal with them all, the trick is to utilize any and all resources you can do to solve their problem. I've always told my employees that we're not... To be successful in this field, we need to be problem solvers, you know, not just parts pushers. Uh, some people know exactly what they need when they come in. You know, however, most of them just have a description of their problem, you know, and they rely on us to help us solve them. I'm constantly reminding my team that a person's $5 problem is just as important to somebody as has got a $500 problem. And if you help them solve that $5 problem, they're going to come back to you with that $500 problem and let you help them solve it. <laughs> When I was in my late teens, I bought a 68 Camaro, and believe me, all that thing was was a paint job. You know, it was a mechanical nightmare. It looked really good, but you couldn't stick a magnet anywhere on that thing that's so full of Bondo. <laughs> and just, you know, back in the day, funds was extremely limited, and this is where I learned how to wrench on vehicles, because I couldn't afford to, you know, pay anybody to fix it for me. And thank goodness we had a Napa store in Jay, and they had some very, very patient counter people, you know, and a mechanic that helped me keep that POS on the road. <laughs> well, that was my only set of wheels, you know, and their patience and help back then has always been in the back of my mind, you know, especially when I'm helping a new customer. You know, and one of the reasons I feel this partnership with Journey to Success has been so successful is that they always have their clients' best interest in mind and also help them work through their problems, whether they're big problems or small problems. And again, I'd just like to say thank you for this award. I really am honored and really appreciate it. And I feel it belongs to everybody at the store and that includes all of my past Journey to Success clients because any organization is only as good as their team. You know, and thank you all very much. Thank you all so much and what an exciting day to celebrate these wonderful honorees and I consider it a privilege to be here with you. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, we're going to move on to the awardees for the Northwest region of the state, and presenting these awards will be Dr. Stephanie Bocamp, Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Oklahoma State, Regents for Higher Education. Please welcome Dr. Bocamp. Good morning. Uh, it is also an honor for me to uh, be here, and I love hearing all of the stories um, of all of the the students and the businesses that work really hard to make Oklahoma a better place for all of our citizens. Our first awardee for Making It Work Day Spotlight is Patty Lester uh, from Northern Oklahoma College, nominated by Kelly Vincent, Senator Roland Peterson, and Representative Chad Caldwell. I believe Patty Lester is not able to be here today, so uh, accepting on her behalf will be uh, Kelly Vincent. Patty has been a part of Northern Oklahoma College Enid campus for 21 years while working in the financial aid office for 20 years. 
Even though Patty serves all students with their financial needs, she works very closely with our Project Achieve students. She provides an internship placement in her office for our students. If the students are interested in pursuing an education in business or administration, she provides skills specific to their educational training and provides employment references to each of our interns. She is an amazing mentor by, telling, by being so compassionate to all students that cross her path. Patty has been a vital part of Project Achieve and we are very lucky to have her at NOC. Our next awardee is for Outstanding Graduate, which is Cody McMullen, and I believe he is not able to be here. Also from Northern Oklahoma College, nominated by Kelly Vinson, Senator Roland Peterson, and Representative Chad Caldwell. Cody McMullen came to the Achieve program in October 2018. He was a single father and knew raising two small children required him to complete educational training and become employed in a career where he could financially take care of his family, but would be meaningful and challenging. He received his bachelor's degree in computer science from Northwestern Oklahoma State University in spring of 2023 with a 3.3 overall GPA. While he was attending college, he interned with NOC's IT department and was a vital part of that team. Currently, Cody is the HMIS specialist, which is Homeless Management Information System Specialist at Community Development Support Association in Enid. Our next outstanding graduate is Jessica Webster, Canadian Valley Technology Center, nominated by Michelle Boyd, Senator Jack Stewart, Representative Rhonda Baker. Redlands Goals Program received Jessica as a student when the PVIT program ended at Canadian Valley Technology Center. Jessica started the TANF program at Canadian Valley Technology Center, focusing on her certificate in administration assistant. Jessica completed her certificate with straight A's. She was also a participant in the Business Professionals of America, where she placed second. During her time at Redlands, she interned in our nursing department and the staff, students, and instructors all loved her. Jessica is currently an administrative assistant with the Cheyenne Arapaho Tribe and is doing a fantastic job. Kelly, I'm going to talk real quick. Uh, I'm Deborah Lamar. I am the director of the Goals Program at Redlands Community College, and we received Jessica after um, the program at Canadian Valley shut down. And she has been one of the best students I think I've ever had. She had a lot of things in her past um, that would have held anybody else back. But she soared, and she couldn't be here today because we got her too good of a job. And <laughs> her boss likes her and needed her because she's such a good um, employee. So I'm just really proud of her, and um, I'm excited to give her this. She deserved it. Thank you. And for Outstanding Community Partner Agency, Hope Parenting Ministry, represented by Glenda Abbey. Abby? I apologize. Nominated by Patricia Lopez, Senator Roland Peterson, and Representative Chad Caldwell. Hope Parenting Ministry is a great resource for the clients, not only in our program, but for all parents in the community. Hope Parenting also plays a role in helping educate our students outside their normal classroom education by providing and training by providing parental guidance and life lessons to help build a strong family foundation within their home. Parenting Ministry also has programs offered throughout the community that help with utilities, medicine, clothing, food, gasoline, and household goods. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's a privilege and an honor to be 
nominated and selected for this award. Um, we, and again, it's just a privilege and an honor as well, just to serve the clients in our area. Um, we have clients that come to our center to sign up for our program, and basically what we do as one of the ministries of Hope Outreach, um, when they come in, they sign up, um, we help educate them in whatever area that they need. We have many, many different areas that we can offer them. We build them a customized um, lesson plan on what they need. Um, if they're pregnant, if they have young children, infants, toddlers, or um, if they need life skills, if they need parenting and discipline, we can, pr we can create that plan to serve whatever need they would need at the time. And then as they come in each week for one hour, one day a week, they earn points. And then they can um, shop in a store that we have supplied with material goods, everything from baby beds to diapers. And they can shop in there with their points. We do not take cash in the store. Um, so they have a way of being educated in anything that they need that we can help them with. And again, it's all individualized. And then they can go in the store and meet the needs of their children with those points. And so that's another way that they can help and take some pressure off, plus get their education. Um, our, we have several ministries at Hope Outreach, but I will tell you, within the parenting ministry, um, we have a great staff there. Um, we, we all work together. It's not just about one of us. You know, I'm up here today, but it's not about me. It's about all of us working together to do this, to serve our community, to serve every client that walks in that door and help them with, with whatever need that they, that they would need. And just come alongside of them, not to judge them, but just come alongside and help in any way that we can. And we have um, a great board, our executive director. I have our program coordinator back there. She should be up here. Matt should be up here. Not just me. But we do, we are just um, so thankful for this award and to be recognized, it is a privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you again for this opportunity um, to be here today and uh, uh, celebrate our awardees. Let's th give all of mine another round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Bocamp. Okay, so we're halfway through our award ceremony. Uh, so let's gra congratulate our Northeast and Northwest awardees one more time. Y'all are <laughs> Okay, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Making It Work Day uh, Committee, the, o the OC, um, OKC Tech, takes great pride in hosting Making It Work Day. The committee works hard all year to prepare and plan this event. Our 2023-24 Oklahoma C Tech officers and advisors are myself, Robin Shambaugh, President, I mispronounced my own name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about having y'all stand up as I introduce you. <laughs> Okay, uh, D. Sage, Chairman, uh, Cato Kiowa Technology Center. Where's D. At? Oh, there you are. You're already standing <laughs> in the pink. Matt Fix, Legislative Liaison. More Norman. More Norman Technology Center. You do a very good job up there. You look very professional. <laughs> Deborah Lamar, Treasurer. She's with Redlands Community College. Wendy Berg, Secretary from Pioneer Technology Center. <laughs> Our regional reps, Katie Quillen, Northeast Region, Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. <laughs> Kelly Vinson, Northwest Region, Northern Oklahoma College. <laughs> Ramona Smith, Southeast Region. She's with Carl Albert State College. Sarah Biddy, Southwest Region, Southwest Technology Center. 
Our OKC Tech State Advisors, Katie Naquet, Oklahoma Department of Career and Technical Education. <laughs> Gina McPherson, Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education. <laughs> and Jennifer Bialy, is that right, Jennifer? Bialy. Bialy. <laughs> She's with Oklahoma Human Services. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Southeast region, and presenting the awards for the Southeast region is Sandra Shelby. Please welcome Ms. Sandra Shelby. Thank you. I'm honored to be here today, and I'll give these awesome awards out to the outstanding partners, um, the outstanding businesses, the graduates, and instructors of the Southeast region. The first award goes to Outstanding Business and Industry Partner, Regional Food Bank, Moore, Joe Austin. <laughs> Joe was nominated by Matt Fix, Senator Daryl Weaver, and Representative Kevin West. Joe has a fantastic partner, Joe has been a fantastic partner for our program in helping us set up internships and provide resources for our higher students. We have been able to use the food bank and more to help our students not only with food insecurity, but also to gain valuable work experience in a nonprofit role in a variety of ways. Joe has, been, has worked above and beyond to be flexible with our needs and the schedules of our students. He's been a pleasure to work with and always treats our students with respect and consideration, no matter what their background is. The Regional Food Bank and more is an invaluable resource for our community. Congratulations, Joe. Oh, man. All right, so as she said, I'm Joe Austin. I'm the director of the Food and Resource Center in Moore, uh, which is the umbrella of the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. Um, we serve um, our communities, Moore, Norman, and South Oklahoma City, about 6,000 individuals a month, uh, 1,800 families. Um, it's a free um, shopper choice food pantry um, that they come in with some dignity and like shop. Uh, no money, no box that we just give them, they come and shop, and they love it. Uh, I want to thank everybody in the room. Um, amazing work. I didn't realize how much work goes into this because feeding people is something I'm passionate about, but we want to get to the point where we don't need to feed people. So, thank you. Um, and thanks to OKCTEC that's long, uh, for choosing me for this award. I'm really, really uh, appreciative and humbled about it. <clears throat> and a special thanks to Matt Fix and Tammy Madden, uh, everybody that works at the HIRE program at the Moore Norman Technology Center. They do amazing work and the interns that we have are fantastic and um, really, really help out um, feeding the people. Um, I, uh, before I was at the Food and Resource Center, I was the director of volunteer operations at the main food bank and we had a culinary training program in our kitchen. Uh, we worked with Team and Metro Tech and it was phenomenal. Um, when I came to the Food and Resource Center, I was sad to leave that part um, and really wanting to do something in the job training world. And then Matt calls, <laughs> and I guess they had tried previous and it didn't just didn't work out, and it was a blessing for us because uh, we love it. And we have other partners that we do very similar things, Lance over there at OCCC, um, and it's just been a phenomenal opportunity and I really appreciate you giving me a call. Um, and I, I want to thank my staff, uh, most importantly. Uh, they're phenomenal. None of them could be here today because we're feeding people. Um, <laughs> probably mad that I'm away, but um, we wouldn't be able to operate without my staff and all the volunteers and the interns and just everybody. It takes a community, as everybody in this room truly knows. So I... Uh, Appreciate it, and thank you.
The next award goes to outstanding graduate, Dinah Schlesser, Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. <laughs> Nominated by Terry Green, Senator Warren Hamilton, and Representative Jim Grego. Dinah came to the Empower program and knew exactly what she wanted to do. She worked hard to get through orientation and quickly began an internship with the Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Office. Dinah completed multiple workshops and universals while in the classroom and volunteered multiple hours in her internship. The Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Office supervisor saw something in Dinah and offered to pay for her training in cleat. She is employed as a correctional officer at the Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Office, making $17 an hour with benefits after 90 days. Congratulations. So Dinah couldn't be here today because she's at work. So she sent me her speech for all of you. I would like to start off by saying I'm very honored and thrilled to be recognized to receive this award. I would not have been able to do it without the help and guidance I received from my instructor, Terry Green, and my coordinator, Katie Quillen. Nine months ago, I moved to Oklahoma from Pennsylvania to get a fresh new start with my six-month-old son as a single mother. Sadly, in Pennsylvania, I didn't have the means to access childcare so that I could get a job and continue my education. Being that I was just 21 years old, I made several sacrifices to move to Oklahoma to be with my mother so that I could have the help I needed with childcare and be able to get a job to support my son. I'm so thankful that I took that leap of faith and did it because I wouldn't have gotten access to continuing my education and career. It was through the Empower program and my instructor's help that I was able to start a career in law enforcement working at the Pittsburgh County Sheriff's Office and got connected with local college. Things that I thought would be impossible to achieve, considering having my son and being a single parent, suddenly became possible when I got accepted into the Empower program. By being able to intern with the Sheriff's Office, I was offered full-time employment and a, change to further, a chance to further my education. Thank you to Terry for finding local resources that I'm now able to build my future and career on. Thank you to Katie for always having my son and I's best interest in mind. These two women in the Empower program have brought hope back to our community where hope had thought had, thought had been lost. They provided a safe place for me and other students to grow into our talents and open doors to various opportunities to lead and live better lives. Without them, I myself and my fellow classmates wouldn't be where we are today. All the hardships I have faced moving here, I was able to face them all with a smile once I realized that I had the help that I needed. I'm so thankful and grateful for the opportunity the Empower program afforded me, and I'm so blessed to have this award today. Thank you. The next award is another outstanding graduate, Moore Norman Technology Center, Elisa West. <laughs> Nominated by Matt Fix, Senator Rob Standridge, and Representative Jacob Rosecrans, Elisa started in, at Hire in March of 2022. She wasn't really sure what she wanted to do and went back and forth on a couple different career paths. Since she enjoyed computers, she was introduced to the MNTC instructor of the Cloud and Virtual Network Administration Program. She was enrolled in August of 2022 and graduated in May of 2023. Since then, she has ran the Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon, went on an internship with Love's Travel Stop, got a job offer from Love's Travel, and then had competing job offers with Love's and Oklahoma County offices. Elisa has been hired as a systems engineer with Oklahoma County in their Information Technology Department. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, I should have written a speech. <laughs> First off, I would like to thank um, Matt Fix and Laura Thompson, Tammy Madden, and Teresa McDonald with the Hire Program. And I just wish more people knew what a great 
thing, a great program it is. Like, I didn't even, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, yes. I had no idea what it even was. I, I had gotten sick and I was in the hospital for uh, about 44 days and while I was there, I, I realized, oh, I need to do something. I need to make some changes. And so I just applied for TANF while I was there. And the higher program just ended up being part of that. And I just kind of fell into it. And it, I mean, it, it completely changed my life. Like, I've, I'm a systems engineer for the Oklahoma County Board of County Commissioners. And I'm earning a great salary. I'm, um, not relying on any kind of benefits or anything. I mean, that's the whole point of the program is to get out of that. And I did it. I just feel like such a success. And it's, it's just so awesome. And I would also like to thank my instructor, Todd Hendrickson, who really um, helped me along the way. I had you know, some issues here and there. And he was with, it, with me through the whole thing. And I'm just so honored to um, be nominated and to receive this award, and thank you all. <laughs>is the making it work day spotlight this goes to Gloria Wallace Gordon Cooper Technology Center <laughs> nominated by Trobia Anderson Senator Shane Jett and Representative Dell Curbs Gloria Wallace is known for her dedication determination her knowledge and of giving heart to those she serves Gloria spent has spent 22 years as an advocate, not only for the students she serves in the EAGLE program, but for all of Gordon Cooper Technology Center students and staff. She seeks out every opportunity to become better. She works diligently to cultivate job-related internship opportunities, often converting cold contracts into stable internship sites. These partnerships, most of the time, have led to future employment opportunities with great wages and benefits for her students. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Get this put down. I had to write it down. <laughs> it's an, indeed a pleasure to have been nominated for this award. Thank you, Trilbia. And to uh, receive this award. Uh, I'm thankful for the support system that I have in my position. Um, that front row over there. That's a whole support system of mine over there. <laughs> my supervisor, Rayanne Schaefer, she hasn't been my supervisor very long, but let me tell you what, she's real powerful, okay? And she, she's a doer. And Trilvia, that young blood, you know, Fran, when I'm thinking about it, she's like, here it is. <laughs> so, and then my daughter, young blood, quick, fast, in a hurry. Come on, mother. Come on, come on, come on. Clarence Prevost, that support, when I'm like, ooh, he's like, glow, you know. <laughs> and then, of course, my loving husband over there on the end, that 6'10 man, yeah. <laughs> support, total support over there on that corner. Thank you all. I, like you've heard, I've dedicated 22 years to the Eagle program at Gordon Cooper. And I must say, it's been my passion to make a difference and to see a positive change in the life of the individuals that we serve. Serving five counties, I've learned the temperature of each one. They are not alike. <laughs> of the hundreds of individuals that I've served, I've experienced assisting many of them to become successful, whether it was in healthcare, aviation, CNC machining, business, and the list goes on. There's also that disappointing time that you really want that student to succeed but for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. But you know what? Sometimes they return and get a second chance. And I'm always happy about that. So if you know me at all, my preach word that I frequently use both in staffing 
and while in the Eagle program is passion. You must have passion. And that's any powerful or compelling emotion or feeling. You either love it or you hate it. You like it or you don't. If you don't like blood and guts, don't get in the nurse, nursing. If you can't stand screaming children, don't get in the child care. You know? Or it's a strong or extravagant fondness, enthusiasm, or desire for anything. I love doing what I do. I have a passion. And that's what I push to my students. I want you to have a passion so you'll stick with it. It's very exciting for me. Change is a big thing with me. Change. I want to see change. When they come to me in, in a t-shirt and some sweats and, you know, not knowing which way to go, I want to change that. So it's very exciting for me when I'm walking down the halls of Stevenson Cancer Center and I hear someone calling my name and I'm like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and I turn around and it's a former healthcare student that has been, you know, through the program and has excelled. Also, one special student came to mind and I have many, many as, as you do as well. But it was a single father that came to my program many years ago. And he had no idea what he wanted to do. Uh, had a, a history of alcohol abuse. Had lost two sons to death. And he was just done. So after talking and talking and talking and talking, he went through the program. Then he went on to college. So now I have the opportunity. I, I frequently talk to him. And he now, he, ha he received his bachelor's degree. He went on and he received his master's degree. And he has an LPC and a CRC and he's working as an outpatient therapist. So, <laughs> you know, we can't give up on them. When they give up, we can't give up. As directors, as coordinators, OHS, I'm thankful for the partnership. We can't give up. And when things are, when the odds are against them, tell them to hold on. And you know there's a saying that it takes a village to raise children. Well, I just want to encourage you today, in my closing, I want to encourage you that it not only takes a village, for the population that we serve, it takes a state, it takes the coordinators, directors, OHS, everyone with a passionate heart, a non-biased attitude, for these students to succeed. So let's go forth. You may not hear me talk anymore. You may not hear me, you know, for a while or something, but let me just tell you this. Let's go forth and tear down walls and break barriers for those that can't do it for themselves. Let's help them. Let's encourage them. Let's clear some paths that will help them build their career. Never give up. The next award is Outstanding Community Partner Agency. Native American serving non-tribal institutions, Terry Bings. <laughs> Terry was nominated by Delana Markerell, Senator George Burns, and Representative Rick West. The Native American serving non-tribal institutions, NAS, NASNTI, STEM Grant is a federally funded program designed to create three new STEM programs, strengthen math support and strengthen STEM support for CASC students. Services include free tutorial assistance in intermediate and college algebra, workforce seminars, and career assistance through job board access. The NASNTI program helps students achieve their goals and boost their confidence. <coughs> the program goes above and beyond for their students. The impact that NASNTI, especially Ms. Bings, has had on our program 
has helped our students have more confidence in their mathematics. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, I feel very privileged to be here today. Um, when I found out that I had been nominated for this award, I was just um, humbled and very surprised. So thank you ladies so much for that. Um, as she was saying, I work for Carl Albert State College. I work for the Nasante program. It's in Poto, Oklahoma. And so I get the privilege of helping students learn math. And um, that doesn't sound like a fun job, but it is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> um, my goal when they leave is I try to tell them, hey, learning math can be fun. And usually they look at me and they're like, absolutely not. <laughs> um, but Yesterday, I was working with somebody, and they turned and looked at me, and they were like, that is fun. And I was like, see, I told you, math can be fun. It can be. Um, so I feel very privileged. As you were talking about a while ago, it's a passion. I feel very passionate about helping students. That is my goal in life, is whatever we're doing, we, we do it with everything in our being to do it to, to the best of our ability. And so I'm very passionate about helping students. I want them to succeed. It doesn't matter whether it's helping a student with um, a, a, a college algebra class where they are trying to get through that class just to be able to pass and get their associates, or whether they are actually working on trying to pass that math class so they can get their GED. And I was very privileged to get to help a young lady um, back in the fall. Um, she had six children, was going back, trying to get her GED, couldn't get that math part passed. We worked, she worked so hard, and I am so happy to say that lady passed that and got her GED in November. And it just um, is changing her whole family's life, and it's just so exciting. Um, and the exciting part is just to be a small part of those students um, to see their, their success and their careers and be a part of that, that journey as they're going forward. So I appreciate this. I just want to say for the students out there, you guys are inspiring. I, I'm inspired by students every day and hearing your stories today is just absolutely inspiring. So I thank you for that and thank you for this award. The next award is for Outstanding Instructor, and it goes to Moore Norman Technology Center, Todd Hendrickson. <laughs> Todd was nominated by Matt Fix, Senators Rob Standeridge, and Representative Jacob Rosecrantz. Todd does a great job of working with all of his students to help them master the information and learn the skills that they need to be successful in their field. Having had a career in the industry, he is doing a wonderful job of instructing and preparing the next generation of employees for our community. During the year, uh, he did a fantastic job in communicating with our students and hire staff to let us know of any challenges or issues that were going on so that they could immediately provide resources and assistance needed to help those students be successful. Todd is a joy to work with and has been an incredible asset to the MNTC family. We are proud to be able to work with him. Congratulations. Man, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> Such good speeches up here. I told Matt, I said, I'm just going to be myself today. You know? And he said, go ahead. Uh, okay, you asked for it. Uh, I think it goes without saying that in order for a program like this to come to fruition uh, that we do at MNTC, it takes a lot of like-minded people doing like-minded things for a result. And when... Matt came to me about Elisa, and this is about Elisa today. Uh, and we had an interview about her computer prowess and what she wanted to do. Uh, we decided that she would be a good fit in the program. So I gave her a book for in the springtime, and I said, read this over the summer. Remember? And come back and... Um, and it wasn't a book. <laughs> it was a table. It was... <laughs> 
So when Elisa came back and she started her training, uh, she just exuded something that I had never really seen before in a student. And I think uh, instructors need to be open-minded and need to listen to their students. But what I found out that she was putting out there was hope, total hope. Hope that in the future, uh, she would have a better life for her child, a mother's hope. Hope that in the future, your friends and your family would be proud of you again. Mm -hmm. And finally, hope that this program that you're involved in wasn't just a paragraph on some brochure, that it was for real. And that's what this means to me, this award. It means hope, and Elisa taught me that. Thank you very much. The next award goes to Outstanding Instructor, David Wynn, Call Albert State College. <laughs> David was nominated by Delana Markerell, Senator George Burns, and Representative Rick West. Mr. Wynn goes above and beyond to meet each student where they are academically in his classroom. He teaches Introduction to College Math, previously intermediate algebra and college algebra. Mr. Wynn tutors students outside the classroom and always goes above and beyond to help every student regardless of the obstacles. Mr. Wynn not only helps instructs the students in mathematics, but in life. He helps build their confidence so that they can achieve any goal or accomplish anything they set out to do, which includes future employment or attaining their degree. Congratulations. Thank you everyone for coming today. I'm very grateful to receive this award. Where well, I, I want to thank you everyone at Carl Albert State College because they always support me so that I can have the honor today. Where well, I always believe that every student can become really good at mathematics if the instructor can provide them a learning environment in which they can engage and become the active learner, not only in mathematics, but also the other subject. So student success is the one that motivates me the most to become a better ed educator every day. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Please give another round of applause to the Southeast Award winners. Thank you, Sandra. Wow, goosebumps, chills, tears. <laughs> so nice to be here. Okay, uh, I have the honor to announce the final region, the Southwest region. So. Is Tommy here today? Were you? Oh, there you are. Okay, all right. So for the outstanding graduate, we have Tommy Jean Bumboy. Is that correct? Okay. Southwest Technology Center, nominated by Sarah Biddy, Senator Brent Howard, and Representative Jared Kendricks. And I'm gonna let these two speak. <laughs> I have the honor to tell you a little bit about Tommy today. Tommy's journey is a testament to resilience, personal growth, and an unwavering commitment to excellence. Overcoming adversary and, uh, uh, adversity with determination and grit, Tommy graduated from the automotive program in December 2022. Not content with just earning her automotive service technician certifications, she pursued and has earned her certified high-end day licensure showcasing her dedication to professional development and mastery of her craft. 
This recognition highlights Tommy's outstanding qualities across multiple do domains, from her commitment to rehabilitation to her academic excellence, community engagement, and multifaceted achievements. Tommy exemplifies the values of perseverance, compassion, and leadership. Tommy's story is one of inspiration and triumph. Her resilience in the face of all her challenges, coupled with her commitment to personal and professional growth, sets a shining example for anyone who meets her. Through her remarkable journey, Tommy has not only transformed her life, but has also become a source of inspiration for others. Her dedication to excellence serves as a beacon of hope for those face facing similar obstacles, demonstrating that with determination and perseverance, anything is possible. Okay, for Outstanding Community Partner is Diversion Hub, nominated by Lance Over Overdorf. Uh, Senator Kay Floyd, Representative Marie Turner. Diversion Hub has been a vital part of our program. They have molded several of our students through internship. We see a noticeable change in all of our students when they return from their internship with Diversion Hub. Diversion Hub strives to make the Oklahoma City community safer by connecting individuals involved in the criminal legal system to resource such as housing, employment, physical and mental health, and more. The goal of Diversion Hub is to reduce rates of recidivism and provide a better path forward and away from criminal justice involvement. accepting that on their behalf. So we want to congratulate once again all the awardees and all the wonderful stories that we've heard today. <laughs> Again, we are so proud of our graduates, and we are so grateful to our business, community partners, and instructors. Okay, CTEC is proud to be able to give all of you the recognition, recognition you so greatly deserve. Thank you to the dignitaries and the career tech and college administrators for, uh, um, for the awardees in your community. Please take the time to go see your state legislator, legislatures at the Capitol. Um, your stories have an impact on our state, and our programs have an impact and are needed to provide individuals and their families' opportunities to succeed. This concludes our, th our 2024 Making It Workday Awards ceremony, and it has been an honor to host this event, and OKC Tech hopes to see you again in 2025.